I'm gonna be honest. I am one of those people who reads some kind of article, news headline, research study, and then I'm like, I need to implement this healthy thing into my life and I try it. It works about 5% of the time. About 95% of the time, I'm like, I will never commit to this. This is really not benefiting me. But through my decade or so of just being someone who's obsessed with the health, wellness, fitness world, there's been a couple of habits I feel are the most bang for my buck. They're easy to implement. They don't take much willpower. They're more about adding, not restricting, but I've seen a tremendous benefit from implementing these into my life. And I'm gonna share them with you guys today. This is all just my personal opinion, my personal experience. You gotta figure out what works for you. For example, if I say eat a peanut and you're allergic, no. that seems dumb. Number one, I eat two Brazil nuts every day. <laughs> Speaking of peanuts, once again, if you're allergic to nuts, please don't do this. Brazil nuts are one of the highest percent of foods with psyllium. We tend to not eat a lot of foods naturally that high in psyllium. Like for example, we eat a lot of foods that are naturally high in like omega-6s, part of the American diet, which Canadians also fall under. It's something like two Brazil nuts is 100% of your daily intake of psyllium. I'm not a registered dietitian, but registered dietitians have told me which seems like a scapegoat me saying that, but it's a lot on the internet, go check it out, is it's a great thing for your thyroid. I just got to Sweden with my boyfriend and we just did a grocery haul and what is the first thing I get? And I'm that annoying girlfriend that literally just goes up to him, forces two, he doesn't even realize, I just force two down his mouth. 10 and 10, I recommend. Every day, I have two Brazil nuts. Maybe I'll just be the Brazil nut girl. There's so many jokes with that, the two Brazil nuts. There's so many there. Let your mind wander. Number two that I've implemented is sleeping in a cold room. Andrew Huberman has so many podcasts on this. He's my scapegoat for everything. I have noticed over the last couple of years when I sleep in a cold room, and it sucks. Yes, getting into your bed at first, it sucks. But then once you get cozy, it's so nice and it sucks in the morning because it's even harder to get out of the cold bed. But I get into such a deeper sleep. Good morning, sunshine. I track my sleep on this bad boy, not the Aurora, Aura. I always screw it up. I do have better quality REM and deep sleep whenever I sleep in a cold room. But you might take some getting used to, but I just feel once you do it, you'll be like, ah, I do want to do that more often. Number three, fitness classes, but not for fitness. What? <laughs> Two reasons. If you're one of those people who can't commit, you have a gym membership, but you never show up, or you're always in your cold bedroom in the morning, sitting there and being like, oh, I'm just so sleepy and sleep is more important and I could go, but I had a bad sleep and sleep is the most important thing for your health, so I'm just gonna sleep in today. I'm guilty of that and I've talked myself out of it and yeah, you need to rest and recover, but also sometimes you're just being lazy, myself included. So I book a fitness studio class because I know there'll be a penalty. I have to pay $30 and the front desk staff is sitting there easily being like, Kelty slept in. She no show to the 6 a.m. Barry's boot camp. Again. I don't think they actually do that, but in my mind they do, so it forced me to get there. And also I use fitness classes as a healthier social activity. I don't know what you guys like. I love seeing my friends Saturdays or Sundays and like us meeting up, but we don't have a lot of time and we want to do something together. There's only so many coffees you can drink and nights out you can have. And just, it's a fun way to get a social activity in with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> My little bumblebee. Without it like negatively impacting your week, like drinking, which you still need sometimes. And sometimes the best combo is fitness class, then mimosas classes. Not so much actually the workout, it's just like the everything around it. It helps build a foundation in my fitness routine, if that makes sense. And that's why it's like a healthy habit to do. Number four, this is a mindset I have really implemented over the last couple of years and I was not always great at it, but I, and I'm not perfect for sure. I don't focus on bad or negative food. Don't eat chocolate, don't eat junk food. This food is bad. I just focus on getting in enough nutrients. So every day I just really try and think of like, oh, have I got protein? Have I got fiber? Have I got my healthy fats? Have I had a few servings of different colored fruits and vegetables? Have I had some complex carbs? Have I had some olive oil or a salmon? And I just really try and think of it that way. Instead of being like, oh, I had a lot of chocolate today or don't have chocolate today. I'm, you're just focusing on getting so much in and you feel so good and then you enjoy the food because you're like, ooh, I'm so like full. Tomorrow, I'm making for the vlog a fall salad. I saw my friend post that she saw on TikTok. Oh my God, roasted pecans and yams and goat cheese. Oh my God, like in fall, this, ooh, that's all good for you. Instead of me being like, oh, 
I just wanted a pumpkin scone, which I did have this morning, but I'm not gonna like demonize it. So it's not the demonizing, it's all about getting in enough nutrients. And everyone's nutrition goals is different. So I'm not gonna tell you what nutrient dense food is to you. Never demonize chocolate. Anything that involves demonizing chocolate, I'm just gonna deny. <laughs> Even like Kelsey. Experts, I don't, mm, mm, nope, mm, nope, I don't care. I won't lie. I will brainwash myself. And if you're gonna cancel me because I'm in denial of chocolate's nutritional value, I don't care. I'll go down with the ship. Bring it down with me. As long as it's chocolate at the bottom, I'm happy. Focusing on the 10 minutes of stretching before a workout. Hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> I don't know for you guys, like there's so many times I'll go to the gym and just the daunting task of having to go through an hour long workout. Sometimes you're just not in the mood. And then I'm also rushed, so when I get there, I always eliminate stretching. So it's like just getting that workout and not the stretching and mobility work. Now I've prioritized the 10 minute either before or after mobility work instead of the actual workout. And I wanted two things. If I'm not in the mood to work out, I just tell myself, all I have to do is get there and stretch. And something about just saying, I just have to go there and stretch for 10 minutes is so easy. And then usually once I start stretching, I'm like, oh, I still got like some time. Oh, I'll go do my workout. And it just like motivates me to be there. Focusing on it has reduced my lower back pain. Just not having lower back pain, even though like I was in my mid twenties having like severe lower back pain, which is all from mobility issues. Just making the most important part of my fitness routine, the mobility and stretching has improved my quality of life so much. What I'd always do in the past is I would get to gym, go through an hour, do the full workout, and then I'm getting hungry and tired and I don't stretch. And then next week that happens and then I just never do it. I just never do it. So I flipped it around instead of being like, I always skip the 10 minutes of abs and mobility and stretching at the end. I'm like, no, that's the priority. Point number six, I'm gonna grab it real fast. I do believe I got a code, which you probably use. I do know I have one, but um, electrolytes. Element is my favorite, but I've also used other electrolyte from some other brands, current go-to and obsessed with. The biggest thing is the reduction of cramps and increased energies. I was a victim of the anti-cell movement and I'd wake up with debilitating calf cramps. Like I'd wake up in tears and I'd wake up in the morning and felt like I did 3000 calf raises in my sleep. Then I learned the science of salting your food. Game changer. Now, if you're very sedentary, have health parameters that make it that you shouldn't salt your food, yes, of course. But I mean, like my athletes, like I was working so much and like scared of salt, which is like you lose so much salt when you work out. I've just done one kilometer loops because I don't know where I'm going. This, this. <sighs> oh, I don't feel good. I have recently drastically reduced my energy drink consumption drastically. That's for a future video. Hit subscribe if you want to see that. Yes, I am doing a big, long, long video on um, something to do with that pop and energy drink. Usually around 2 p.m., 5 p.m., I always had that dip in energy. And what would I go for? Energy drink. I've swapped it with electrolytes. I don't have that dip in energy anymore. And it's also potassium and magnesium in it as well. It's important. Number seven. Actually, this is perfect. When I eat high fiber, vegan, drinking more water. I've learned this the hard way so many times and I've done vegan challenges in the past. I've had days where I just eat a ton of fiber and I'm like, you know what? So be it. I'm going to blow. It's going to be brutal. And I get so backed up, but I've just noticed mindfully if I'm eating vegan, if I'm eating a lot of fiber, drink extra water, it helps it flow through. Obviously the trained vegans, you guys know, you've experienced this first. Us like who just dabble in it, like a meatless Monday kind of gals. And then I just wouldn't do it. Cause I was like, I'm going to be so bloated. Today's lunch is actually kimchi toast. So it's like kimchi mayo, this like thick multi-grain sourdough bread. But then I just drink a bit more water. Like even sometimes it's just like one extra of these if I'm eating vegan. Number eight, weight training for movements, not muscle groups. I used to be like, okay, I want a bigger glutes, hip thrust. I want bigger shoulders, lat raises. And that was all I focused on. Lately, over the last couple of years, I've trained more towards like movements, simply like a push pull. The first movement was a push day. Every first movement would be a push movement, a chest, a squat, and I'd counteract it with the opposite antagonist movement. If it was a push, then I would do some mobility pull action. Heavy bench press, I could alternate it with some kind of like bird dog pulling movement, body weight exercise. So really concentrating on like the movements and I found that has really helped my performance. I have nothing against a woman wanting to grow muscle. I think it's beautiful, it's amazing. I did it for many years, but there just got to be a point I was like, why? Like really, like it looks kind of cool. It looks awesome, but like it was also a point you're like, cool, I got a bigger butt. I know like I used to be so hyper-focused on just getting 
cap shoulders. And then one day I was just kind of like, why? Like literally why? What benefit is this gonna have? I don't think you guys would like me anymore if I had more cap shoulders. The quality of life and the faster I can run, the higher I can jump and the more I can do and the less pain I have. And just kind of like thinking of more nutrient dense foods versus the bad foods. I just started thinking of muscle movements versus like, let's just get bigger muscle. Number nine, having different fitness phases. Right now, I hate training intensely. <laughs> and a month ago, you were I was like, triathlon, hard, challenge. And I've just learned I'm like that. And I go through seasons. I'd say about four times a year, so every three months I switch. Three months, I'm really intense. I wanna get fast, I wanna get strong, I wanna be explosive. And then I just kinda of burn myself out. I was like, I honestly am feeling the stay at home Pilates mom, dog mom vibe. I want to go, I want to go on my hot girl walks, I want to get a stretch in, I want to do a Pilates class, I want to sit in the sauna, I want to feel rejuvenate, and that feels so good, and then I get bored, and then I want intensity. And I've learned I will never be either. Some girls are always intense, and, and men too, are always intense, some are always the yogi ply, and I realize I'm both, and I have to do both, and that is how I continue on for fitness for the rest of my life, and that's fine. Normalize the seasons, like athletes, you have on season and off season, so now I'm like, Right now I'm in my Pilates yoga. I'm like stretching, I'm like, I'm on my hot girl walk. And like, I just don't really care how fast I go or how high I jump. I'm about to go on my hot girl run, which I'll explain in my November 17th video. I got coming out. Got a new series, I'm really excited for that. And then I have a Pilates workout. on a Pilates challenge right now, I'm running, I'm back on my gymnastic stretching routine, so I got some updates for you guys there, versus two months ago, I was doing, I'm still running every day, but it's a lot more like leisurely and fun, and maybe two intense ones a week, versus like it was like three moderate runs, a sprint training, a long run, and two re recovery days, and then I was doing three resistance training and really working on improving my vertical, and just right now, I'm like, I don't care. I just spent so many years trying to get a bigger butt, and there's nothing wrong with having a big butt, that's amazing. But there's also gets to be a point where I'm like, can I just accept I have a strong glutes and I'm athletic and growing my butt an extra inch isn't really gonna improve my quality of life versus like right now doing a Pilates workout, going for a nice run is so enjoyable for my mental health and it's obviously physically good. So I'm gonna go do that right now. And then number 10, I'm actually gonna do something I'm working on. It is something when I do it, it's so important and it's so good, but I suck at it and I don't always do it, it's sitting down and making myself a meal, especially when I'm alone. Now that I just, especially in COVID, I just, I got in this really weird space that like I would never eat a meal. Like I just kind of sit up and I just stand by my kitchen and just kind of like snack, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with snacking, but like, it was like I couldn't give myself the space to like take an hour, make a nice meal, prep it, make it pretty, sit down and eat. And now sometimes I, of course, have done it for the internet. And like, it's weird that like, I almost have to force myself to do it to the internet to actually do it. And just like talking to my therapist, it's like, if I'm with my friends or family, of course I'm gonna make it beautiful and amazing for them. But I'll never do that for myself because I'm like, I don't deserve like, rooted in a lot of shit. But like, it's almost like I am so focused on just giving and getting things done and productivity and working that I can't just like allow myself to sit and enjoy. And it gives me severe anxiety sometimes to sit and enjoy a meal, especially if it's in the middle of the day, cause I'm like, I could be working and I have this and I have a hundred messages and emails to catch up and I'm, so I'll just sit there and shove it down. But whenever I like, I take myself and it's like up such an act of self care of like sitting down, not standing up and snacking, actually making a meal, putting it down in front of me and enjoying it and being in the moment and not thinking about the hundred different to do things. And I'm not perfect, but I'm gonna continue working on it because it is not the healthiest mindset I've ever been in in that sense, like I'm not saying I have a severe unhealthy relationship with food or anything. And I pray for everyone who does that such, like I just want, I, if you are there, I'm just gonna give you a big hug because you're amazing and you're strong and you're phenomenal. And Kendra, go drink some water. Cause you deserve to fill yourself up with nutrients and you deserve to take a minute to do something nice for yourself and your body and make a nice meal. And you don't just have to make a nice meal for a video or for your friends. You deserve to make a nice meal that will be eaten and no one will ever see. And I'm going to do that. And you won't see it because I'm doing it for myself. I'm gonna do it tonight. Mm. Anyways, those are my top 10. Some I'm working on, some I've done. Reminder, I'm not a doctor. I also wanna say when I'm doing stuff, I guess none of these happen overnight. When I was in my late teens, early 20s, I was in a very unhealthy place. And how I changed in like the last decade is like slowly doing things like this. It was like habit over habit, and like one good thing leads to another. Like whether it's having a goal and working towards that goal or just simply drinking enough water in a day, 
then that makes you feel better. And then working on your sleep. And then because your sleep feels better, you can do this. If you just feel overwhelmed by the health things, just try one thing and slowly build it. It's not an overnight thing. I know I get like that, but then next week I'm gonna re-change my life and I'm gonna be this perfect person and I'll always do it and always fail. And the only thing that's worked is slowly adding things that I can stick to over time. And suddenly you kind of look back and be like, wow, I do a lot of healthy shit for myself. Not perfect, but a lot and you deserve it too. So it's like, pick one of these. Try some Brutazil nuts, unless you're allergic to nuts, please don't and figure out what works best for you. If you guys have any habits, comment down below. I'd love to hear some new, like share, share a little tip that's like significantly improve your life that was really cheap or takes no time. Love to hear that. Be gentle to yourself because you deserve it and focus on f more, adding more life and nourishment, not punishing and restriction. And have a great day. Go pet a dog. Love you guys. Bye.